On today's show, Lucid announces that its upcoming air sedan can travel more than 830 clicks per charge. That's according to the US EPA test cycle. Tesla announces a five to one stock split ahead of its battery day and shareholder meeting. And our Hyundai Kona EV travels more than 1000 kilometers on a single charge. But there is a catch. <laughs> These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I know that this week has been a bit fraught with COVID-19 rearing its ugly head again in New Zealand, but I'm hopeful that the next 10 minutes or so can help you relax and catch up on better, more hopeful news. Back at the start of the summer, we got the chance to sit down with CEO and CTO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rawlinson. During our interview, which you can see on this channel, Peter dropped some pretty big hints about the upcoming Lucid Air and how it would have a pretty impressive range, despite having a smaller than originally planned battery pack. This week, we learned just how impressive that range will be. 517 miles, according to independent testing, following the official EPA test procedures for EVs. Lucid says the range is possible thanks to the air's 900 volt power electronics, drivetrain and low coefficient of drag. We'll get to see the air for the first time in its production form in September. And right now, assuming it can reach production according to schedule, and nobody else beats it to market, it will be the longest ranged EV on sale. When the Porsche Taycan launched last year, Porsche was very keen to make sure we knew all about its over-the-air update system for the luxury performance sedan. But while Porsche has rolled out the necessary network support to make over-the-air updates possible, it's currently suffering the embarrassment of asking Taycan owners to take their cars to their local dealership in order to have their cars upgraded with the latest and greatest operating system. The reason for this? Apparently, the new system update for the Taycan is just so large that sending it via the cellular modem in the Taycan would have not only taxed the network, but also resulted in unbearably long update times. Porsche is hopeful that future updates will be available over the air, and I'm guessing that most Taycan owners are actually hoping the same. BMW has been pursuing the idea of using geofenced zones to force its plug-in hybrids to operate in electric-only mode for some time now. And now the first of such zones have gone live in the UK. Called BMW E-Drive Zones, BMW customers with new plug-in hybrid 3, 5, 7 and X5 series vehicles will now find their cars can automatically switch from hybrid or gasoline operation to all electric mode when entering clean and zero emission zones in central London and Birmingham. Existing owners with plug-in hybrids running BMW's operating system 7 will apparently get an update for their cars via an over-the-air software update to turn on the feature. Why it's great to see new ways to ensure zero emission zones remain, I would rather, as I'm sure you would, see more choice in all electric vehicles. Hopefully we'll see that happen very soon. Ahead of its September Battery Investor Day and annual shareholder meeting, Tesla announced this week that it will be executing a five-for-one stock split at the end of August. As the name suggests, stock splits involve taking existing stock and then splitting it into however many discrete shares, each worth a fraction of the value of the original share. In Tesla's case, this translates to taking the share price on the close of business on August 28th and then dividing that price by five, issuing shareholders four new shares for every share they already own, meaning that shareholders will have five shares for every share they previously had but the total value of those shares will actually remain the same at point of split. We actually made a video discussing this during the week in full, so check out that if you require more explanation. It has a claimed sprint time of less than 2.2 seconds, a top speed in excess of 221 miles per hour, and a range of more than 1,000 miles. And now we've got to see the Hyperion XP1 for the very first time. 
revealed midweek online via publishing of a teaser video that combines both real-world footage and computer graphics, the XP1 is powered by a hydrogen fuel cell stack that, combined with all the other pieces of this vehicle, weighs in at less than £2,000. Hyperion's special source is claimed to be space-age construction materials like Kevlar reinforced composites, which the company says is inspired by NASA and designed to save weight and ensure a good power-to-weight ratio. But while we know what the car looks like, we don't have a whole lot else to go by, like where it's actually going to fill up. Automakers file patents all the time, and on this channel we've covered plenty of them. But the patent you're seeing right now isn't just any patent. Its 18 authors include Elon Musk. Yes, that's right. The latest patent to be filed by Tesla for Smart Summon was co-authored by Musk and 17 other Tesla staff, reminding us that unlike some industry CEOs, he likes to roll up his sleeves from time to time. A remote control feature that leverages Tesla's autopilot system to allow cars to automatically meet their owners at the entrance to a parking lot, as well as parking themselves after dropping their owners off at the same, Smart Summon is already available in some markets. While the patent was filed early last year, it's only just been published, something that is really not that unusual in patent land. I am constantly being told by viewers to this channel that, despite making regular long-distance trips in a non-Tesla, it's just not possible to drive across the US in anything other than a Tesla EV. This week, we learned of someone else proving the exact opposite, except this time it wasn't a car driver, but a Harley Davidson Livewire rider by the name of Felix Stelmezek. Faced with months of working from home and social distancing, he jumped at the chance to ride an epic 3,500-mile trip in order to do some research ahead of a potential work relocation from Atlanta, Georgia to California. Although he says he thinks the approach the trip in, quote, a somewhat naive fashion, he successfully made the trip with only a few broken charging stations to deal with and working alternatives to fill him up. And that said, he did apparently roll in with the electronic equivalent of vapour in his tank a couple of times, reminding us all that good planning is key, regardless of what EV you happen to drive. Tesla has been contacting businesses who've offered destination charging for Tesla owners in the past with a view to offering them the chance to upgrade to the latest third-generation destination charging hardware. Originally, Tesla had offered locations free destination charges so that Tesla owners could use. The expectation was that the businesses offering them would pay for all of the electricity. But now it looks as if Tesla is getting ready to enact paid charging through that third generation hardware, which presumably turns charging into a new revenue stream for the owners of those destination charging sites. While the process would be seamless for Tesla owners, it does cause some worry that the new hardware may not allow non-Tesla owners to charge with a Tesla to J1772 adapter, something which has in the past dramatically expanded destination charging options for non-Tesla owners. Construction sites are noisy places full of the cacophony of organised chaos that's jackhammers, drills, dump trucks, diggers and other construction equipment. But German company Vakuneusen has now launched a new series of products designed to do away with the smell and noise of your average construction site and instead replace the air with a gentle whir and buzz of zero emission construction equipment. Earlier this year, it showcased a completely zero emission construction site in the middle of Denmark. And this week, it launched one of those vehicles it showcased then, the all-electric mini excavator EZ-17E. The mini excavator is powered by a lithium-ion battery, which Vaka Neusen says can last an entire day on a busy work site and can be recharged at night using any kind of power source from 100 volts single phase all the way up to 415 volts three phase. And finally, in Europe, the Hyundai Kona EV with the 64 kWh battery pack has an official WLTP test cycle range of 484 km per charge. This makes it far from the longest legged electric car on sale today, although as several people have commented on this channel before, it's certainly a car that you can get more out of if you know how to drive it. 
Just how much more though? Well, according to a team who just broke a new Hyundai record for distance covering on a single charge, a whole lot more. You see, three Kona EVs driven in an efficiency event in Germany have just covered 1,018, 1,024 and 1,026 kilometers respectively on a single charge. That's more than double the official WLTP range. The catch? The teams are on a closed road, averaging speeds of around 30 kilometers per hour, with no con air conditioning or any auxiliary equipment on. Hyundai, it's not particularly great marketing to promote super slow driving now, is it? And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure that you hit the notification bell below so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you have that browser open, if you haven't already, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you will help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many, many years to come. I'll be making some more great content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, stay safe. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask, and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.